Hey everyone, welcome back and swing from Backbench Coder. After a long time back with a new React Native video, in this video we will see how to create an advanced level React Native boilerplate using React Native CLI, TypeScript, Custom Path, Elias, ESLint, PrettyR, Husky, Lint, Test, and Commit Lint. Huh. This is the very first video on React Native in this channel. In future you will see a lot more videos on mobile app development using React Native. Okay, so without wasting any time, just go to a terminal and let's initialize the project. But before that, let's see the latest version of React Native. Now look at this. The latest version is 0.70.0, but it's been released around 7 days ago. We will not install the latest version until we get a good response from the community. And then let's see. Okay. So we'll be installing this 0.69.5, which is released around 18 days ago. But there's an issue. If you create the React Native app with 0.69.5, you'll face one error. And that is, this CLI.init is not a function. So to fix that, it's saying that, hey, you just first need to initialize the app with 0.68.2, and then upgrade this to 0 0.69. Okay, so let's do that. So for that, just run the command npx react native in it. Then the app name, which is rn boilerplate in my case. And then you need to mention the version. So version will start with 0 0.68.2. And then we'll upgrade this to 0 0.69.5. And by the way, guys, don't just clone this repo. Just build this boilerplate with me. You'll learn a lot of new things. One eternity later. Cool. Meanwhile, let's see how to upgrade this version. So, yeah, upgrading to new version, this is from the official documentation of React Native. And it's saying that, hey, just run this npx React Native upgrade and mention the version. Okay, so just copy this command. The cd to rn boilerplate. Now, before upgrading the project, you need to create a git folder. So, git in it. Let me just add a simple comment. Okay. Cool. Clear the console and now console <laughs> clear the console and then just paste the command npx react native upgrade and the version name is 0 0.69.5 okay let it upgrade cool done let's open this in your code editor okay so first of all just go to package.json and here you can see these two scripts one is for the android and one is for the ios so if you want to run the android app just run here on android and if you want to run the ios app just run here on ios i will not start any of this app because i don't need to run any of this app in this video okay next just go to index.js and here you can see this app component which is injected let's go inside the app component and here you can see few errors related to typescript so we'll fix that soon well this is just a simple react component so let's remove this and create a phrase component or an fe and this is app fine and next let's install typescript okay so for that you can just go to the official documentation using typescript yeah so you need to add typescript to an existing project so for that just okay, so for that let's install these dependencies let me just copy this just copy it just go to a terminal and paste it here you're going to need to install the react test renderer and then you also don't need to install this typescript class and file of gist so just install the typescript types react and types react native as a dev dependency Press enter, let it install. Meanwhile, let's copy this tsconfig file from the official documentation and then create a new file mtsconfig.json in your root folder and paste it here. Beautiful. Next, what we are going to do, we are going to create a new folder named source inside the root and then I'll put the app.js inside the source folder. This is just for the consistent folder structure, guys, nothing else. Okay, inside the source, look at this, we have this app.js and now as we have installed TypeScript, we are going to change the extension to app.tsx. So if a TypeScript file contains a React component, the extension should be .tsx, else it should be .ts. For example, just go to index.js and it should be .ts because it doesn't contain any React component. So index.ts, now you might get an error and that is, hey, cannot find module app.json. So for that, you need to add this user.js module. So just go to tsconfig.json and here under the compiler option just add resolve json module true and now just go to index.ts the error should be vanished beautiful Bhai, maza aya. next let me just create one more component inside the source but this will be inside the components folder so components slash demo.tsx we have created one demo component inside the components folder or nfe Okay, now just go to app.tsx and let's try to auto import the demo component. And look at this, it's been imported from dot slash component slash demo. But hey, this is a relative path, right? We need to convert this to TypeScript path alias so that we can use this this way at that component slash demo. Okay, we can convert this to an absolute path. 
So for that, you can just go to official documentation. Just scroll down and look at this using custom path alias with TypeScript. So for that, first of all, you need to install this Babel plugin module resolver. Just copy this command. Just go to your terminal. Install this. And next, it's saying that, hey, just go to tsconfig.json and add the base URL and the, and the path aliases. Okay, so let's do that. Let's go to tsconfig. And here you need to add the base URL, which is dot means, means a root folder. And then the paths. Now, GitHub Autopilot is giving a lot of sizes. Okay, so first of all, let's alias the components folder to add the components. So add the components to source slash components slash star. That's it. Next, we need to tell Babel that, hey, please resolve the modules for, for the source folder. So for that, you can just go to optional documentation and just copy this snippet of code, which is just using the module resolver plugin. And then under this preset, just paste it here remove the plus fine we are telling module resolver that hey this is the root which you need to target this is a type of files which you need to resolve and then these are the alias let me just remove the test in fact just delete the test folder because we don't need it okay and then this alias which is dot slash source slash components alias to add the components and that's it and now just go to your index.ts sorry just go to your app.tsx and look at this is add that component slash demo is working fine. And by the way, guys, if you get any runtime error related to this module resolver, just run the metro server again with clearing the cache. I'll put the comment somewhere on the screen. Okay, cool. Fine. And next, let me just add the ESLit and PTR. Now, guys, notice that if we just go to package.json, we already have this ESLint installed, right? But this is really bare minimum. We need a better development environment. So for that, we are going to install a bunch of plugins. Let's do that. Here it is. So first of all, we need to install PTR and then ESLint plugin React, ESLint plugin PTR, and then I have this ESLint config PTR, which will resolve all the conflicts between ESLint and PTR rules. And then I have this ESLint plugin import so that Linter does not give any path alias related issue. And then I have this TypeScript ESLint ESLint plugin, which will resolve all the conflicts between TypeScript and ESLint. And then I have this TypeScript ESLint parser. Okay, just install it as a dev dependency, guys. I mean, of course. Okay, fine. Let's clear the console. Let's go to a config file of ESLint, which is ESLint RC. And here, look at this. We are extending this React Native community. By the way, React Native community is already installed uh, as a dev dependency. Look at this. It comes by default with React Native. Cool. So, first of all, we are going to convert this to an array because we need to extend a bunch of set of rules. Okay. Cool. with that also extend the plugin react slash recommended and then plugin react slash gss runtime and then plugin pts slash recommended okay i don't think i need to explain anything here and then we are going to add a couple of plugins one is ptr and second is typescript typescript as eslint and then i need to add the typescript eslint parser okay for now just save this and now just go to demo.tsx oh uh, nothing is happening so let me just reload the window and yeah ESLint is in action. Okay, with that, let me just add one more variable without using it. So A is assigned a value is not used. Look at this. TypeScript is sorry. ESLint is giving us an error. With that, we are also getting one error, which is React is defined but not used. But this is not a valid error, right? Because we need React for the GSS transformation. So now let me just disable this error. Go to ESLint RC and here we are gonna and here we are gonna define the rules. So just add the rules. The first rule is react slash gsx uses react is one it will resolve the issue react is defined but not used with that we are going to add one more rule which is arrow body style error so what it does let me show you just go to demo.tsx and look at this unexpected block statement surrounding arrow body okay just fix this arrow body style problem fix it oh, we don't need this it is assigned a value but never used just save this and now look at this yes it is working fine and guys, if you just go to ptrrc.js, it's already good. We don't need to change anything. Cool. Let me just add a commit. It will just run ptr right on this ts and tss file. We had to add this escape double quote, else it will throw error. So just notice it. Just save this and let, now let me just commit it. We're going to fix this commit message soon. Added yes, lint. Clear. And next, we need to add the git hooks. So when you work in a team, you need to make sure that nobody puts the bad code to the remote repository. So for that, we'll be using Husky and Linstaged. So Husky is a really nice package to manage the Git hooks. 
Not let me just install the husky and uh, lane stage. So husky, not husky, and lane stage. Okay, let it install. I'll talk about lane stage later. Okay, so to make sure the husky works, just go to scripts. Instead of scripts, just add one more script, which is prepare. So prepare husky install. And now just go to your terminal and run yarn prepare. And notice that it will create this husky folder in your root. Inside the husky, you can create all the hooks. Okay, so the first thing we are gonna add is pre-commit. So what it will do? It will make sure that before every commit, you run the yarn lint on your code base. Okay, so for that, just run this command, which is yarn husky, add, just create this hook inside the husky folder. So husky class pre-commit, this is the name of the hook. The file name is important. And then the command, which is yarn lint. Yarn lint. Okay, enter. And now just look at this. Inside the husky folder, this pre-commit hook is created. Let's test the hook. Just go to demo.tsx and just define a variable without using it. Okay, const a is equal to 12, which is giving an ESLint error. And now let's try to commit it. So git commit, I mean git add all first. Git commit minus m test husky hook. And look at this ESLint dot is run, which is this script, this lint script. And it's giving that, hey, A is assigned a value, but never used. So please resolve the error before committing this. Resolve the error, save it, commit it again. And now you should see that there's no error. Oh, one more error. Unexpected block statement surround the arrow, surrounding the arrow body. Oh, just go to app.tsx. Mm -hmm. Look at the beauty of hook. I mean, git hook. And now it should work fine. Great. Okay, now let's say on commit, you need to run multiple comments only for the staged file. So for that, we'll be using the lint staged. Let's go to package.json and here, inside this package.json, we are going to add one more key, which is lint staged. So lint staged is the key. And here, just mention the type of files, or I should say mention the type of staged files where you want to run the set of comments. And then inside this array, we are going to put the set of comments, which is yarn lint and yarn format. Because of first it will run the linter and then it will run the prettier to format the files. Just save this and now just go to the pre-commit hook and change the command from yarn lint to yarn lint staged. Okay, just save this. Uh -huh. Again, just go to demo.tsx. Just add const a is equal to 12. A is assigned a value but never used. Just try to commit it. It add all. It commit test lean staged and look at this preparing lean staged running task for staged files yarn lint is run and then yarn format yarn lint is giving an error so it is not proceeding so first of all just remove the error and git add all git commit m and now look at this yarn lint is successful and then yarn format is also successful and our files are committed great git hooks are interesting right so let's add one more hook that will run after every merge Every time one branch is merged, we need to install the dependencies, right? And with that, we also need to install the pods in iOS. So why not just automate that? So just go to your terminal and run this command, which is again yarn husky add. Just add this hook post merge inside the husky folder. And the command is yarn and end npx pod install. So first of all, it will run the yarn to install the dependencies. And then it will run npx pod install to run the pods inside the iOS folder. Just enter. And now just go to post merge and look at this. I have this command. I'm not going to test it, but guys, it will work. So you can just test it by you know, merging one branch to another. Okay, clear the console. The last thing I want to do is I want to follow a specific message format. Now, most of our commit messages are like first, first commit, second commit, commit this, commit that and all. But when you work in a large code base, you need to make sure that all your teammates follow a specific commit message format. So for that, we are going to install the commit lint to yarn add the dev dependency of course. Commit lint slash CLI and commit lint slash config conventional. Just enter and meanwhile let's see what is commit lint. And here you can just see this video. Just look at this video. It will show you how the commit message should be formatted. Okay. And here guys look at this. So the format should be like this. Foo colon bar. The foo is a type which can be either build, core, feature, fix, no, refactor, revert, style and all. 
and then colon and then you need to add the specific commit message which is what has been changed in this commit that's it with that you can also put a scope which is not mandatory yeah that's it let's see okay before running the commit lint we need to add the config file we have this configure command just copy this and paste it it will just create a commit lint.config.js file and then we'll just extend this rule okay just save this and the last thing is we'll add one more husky hook that will check if your last commit message is correctly formatted or not okay so let me just paste it again just create this commit message hook inside the husky folder and the and the command is yarn commit lint edit dollar one which means just test the last commit enter and then again you can see this hook which is pre-commit sorry commit message okay and commit lint dash dash edit dollar one okay let's test it git add all git commit random commit message enter it should not be accepted i mean why it should be accepted there's nothing called commit <laughs> we don't need commit link for this okay now guys look at this this input is random commit message which is not accepted because the subject is empty and the type is empty okay so let's give a better commit message to get at all it commit minus m it's not a random commit message it is teacher added commit lint enter now it should be accepted and guys look at this it's been accepted great so that's it guys that's it for the first version of react native boilerplate in the next version we're going to add a lot more things we're going to add react native navigation react native video animated gesta and dlr custom fonts svg transformer dot in variables lot of things so guys please make sure to subscribe this channel for further videos and i'll see you in the next video bye